Okay, so TRVL. I've been messing around with the idea of a harmonic on TRVL. And so it looks like we are at the moment impulsing at the moment. There's a little bit of an impulse going on. And when I zoom in, I can, I mean, you can see that the dips are being bought up, which is what you want to see. And you're seeing that on all the exchanges, the price just gets snapped up as the price drops, it gets snapped up. And it's looking quite good. We've cleared this um, golden pocket area. So when you do a, a fib pull from the relief rally in the bear market through to the all time low, do a fib pull, you can see that we came into the golden pocket, found resistance. Couldn't get past these lower, these local highs here, and they were just snapped up. And now we've broken out of this golden pocket area, and we're consolidating. So it looks like there's still continuation. Still not, still not seeing the crazy increase in volume that we will need to see. Maybe that's going to come higher up. No one. No one can predict the future. So no one knows if and when that will happen. But one thing's for sure that the higher it gets, the more FOMO people are going to get. And so at the moment, we're still nicely continuing our potential Adam and Eve pattern um, and we still have to kind of make a higher height on the weekly time frame so let me get rid of these fib these range pulls now they're just a bit distracting that's the uh, that's the pivot to be I mean we can we can get above that pivot that would be a higher high. And so you'd basically, you'd be going from Yeah, that's kind of what we want to see. We want to see a higher high. And we're not there yet. We're not far. That far away from what could be a higher high. We're only about 65% away from a higher high. I don't know if this is going to happen. I can't tell you it is. It is also possible that we make a higher high and then it's also possible that if we don't, if we can't get past the 50% mark, that we end up with some kind of inverse head and shoulder pattern too. Like, so there are some different kinds of patterns that can form out of this idea of a Adam and Eve pattern. But we just, we just have to see how it, it plays out. There is a little bit of impulse happening now, but we just, until we start seeing a 
a rapid increase in volume. We have to see where people take profit. We don't know when that's going to happen. Will people take profit? I'm not I'm not looking to take profit at these lower levels. I still consider 8.16 cents as a low a lower price in the scheme of things and my my conservative target is about 5.1 cents roughly there. So from where we are now to my bull market target we're still about a 60x away from my target okay so in the scheme of things i'm not looking to just arbitrarily take profit here and if anything if we do get any kind of pullback i am looking to accumulate more so that's kind of the way i'm playing it at the moment Sure, there are other opportunities in the in the crypto markets, but I think uh, I think this is an a hidden gem. So that's why I'm so interested in TRVL. Now, there's a few things that could play out, and so I was just kind of messing around with some ideas. Obviously, I've shown people some things. I've shown everyone this uh, this Wyckoff schematic. You can just um, bear with me. Let me just hide these into yeah, call it harmonic. So I've shown people a couple of potential ideas that might be f playing out at the moment. I do think that the 236 is this LPS here. See the LPS here, which is your lowest point of support. I think we've made a, a massive flip from resistance to support on the horizontal time frame. Uh, sorry, on the horizontal level on the higher time frame. This 236 level. I think that's a big achievement. If, and if, we've effectively we've reversed a large portion of this price action and so we're kind of going back to june july of 22 this was a relief rally so i'm kind of ignoring this whole relief rally and in many ways that was good that was good because that helps reverse the trend in terms of the way the momentum is if we never had this and just continued down it would be a different pattern effectively it could have been if that would have happened you could have been looking at a, 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 a teacup if that relief rally didn't happen you could have been looking at a teacup and the handle so you also have to bear in mind that different things can cause different things to happen <laughs> no one no one knows what's going to happen it's just ideas uh hello crypto burger what is blowing my mind is how close to the new btc all-time highs we are and how we still have maybe 23 months of bull market to go plus more etfs and a halving and a fed rate cuts you make a very very solid observation i think 23 months of bull market is I'm not thinking 23 months. I'm thinking a much shorter bull market this time round. I'm, and I'll, I can explain that afterwards. But let me just continue with this TRVL uh, analysis quickly, and then I'll move on to some other things potentially at some other coins or back to BTC. So we, I have this uh, Wyckoff schematic. I think this 236 is the lowest point of support, and I think we've. We haven't back tested it yet. Doesn't necessarily mean we are going to back test it. Um, potentially, if you're zooming in, you could argue that maybe there was a little bit of a back test and it was just front run 
I don't know. Could it go down and do that? Sure, it could always do that. The price could always do that. And that's still quite a large drop from where we are to the low, low, lowest point of support. We're still looking at a 31% drop. I do think, though, that that would be a great opportunity if anyone is looking to pick up this token, if that was to offer itself. And um, it's not going to be bearish. If we were to just go down now and back test that 236, I don't think that's going to be bearish at all. If anything, I think that's been quite bullish because it will give people an opportunity to buy at lower prices. And uh, there'll be a lot of people looking to sip the dip, looking to suck up the dip if that was to happen. I'm not expecting this. I think that would be very unusual. Um, but, you know, no one can predict the future. That would be very weird, but let's see. So looking at the higher time frame again, just looking at this Wyckoff, I think the next... If this was to follow true, then we're probably looking to get above this pivot here. And potentially, wherever this AR is, could this AR be slightly higher? Who knows? Like, maybe it's there. Who knows? Somewhere there. If we can get above there above this pivot here then there's a few things that could happen and it all depends on volume it all depends on whether people take profit and how they take profit or whether they just hold on just hold for higher because they're just looking for higher i think most people will be hodling for higher but you know no you can't you can't you can't predict how people how and how much and where they take profit because already, you know, from the lows, if someone f accumulated this token at about three or four cents, if we do manage to get to these higher levels, higher prices, that's already a 4x on their investment, 4x. That may not seem much in terms of crypto, but for most people, that's still quite a, a handsome increase in value. You just got to bear that in mind. So for this Adam and Eve pattern to complete, you kind of want this pivot to to flip as just as a support line. So then, if you do go up, you'd actually prefer to go up much higher. so that there's room for a pullback and the pullback could be the correct which is a correction effectively could be something like that could be a long a prolonged zigzag maybe five waves who knows how that will form but some kind of flat correction in this higher range above this pivot that's formed. That'd be very nice. That'd be very nice. Doesn't even have to be prolonged, as prolonged as I've imagined. It could just be ABC, ABC. So if I just remove that, if we are to push up, it could be like an ABC. something like that for continuation and that would fit in well with this kind of if you look at this Wyckoff schematic it would fit in well with this SOS idea and it would also fit in well with this bullish trend because the bullish trend effectively is continuing that's what you would that's what we would be looking for for the trend to continue and then you also have um kind of some kind of bull market trend line somewhere like that and so if that was to happen if that if we were to get some kind of prolonged 
correction. If we push up into the golden pocket and correct, maybe like a zigzag like that. Then it would work, it would work out quite nicely. It would just be back into the trend line that, and, then, and then the continuation after you have the correction above this pivot. That would work very well with this Adam and Eve pattern. And then if it was a Wyckoff schematic, you could potentially, you might potentially, it'd be, I mean, it's on the Wyckoff schematic, it's SOS, which really means sign of strength. You want to see strength. And I think strength in this context would be getting into that golden pocket and consolidating underneath resistance. That's what you want to see for strength. You want to see consolidation underneath resistance, but also not falling back underneath what this is. It This is an LPS. LPS, the second LPS, after the buy up is the last point of support. Now, we don't know where exactly the last point of support will be. Could it be the 50% mark? Yes. Could it be with this, this pivot? Yes. Could it be slightly lower down at nine cents? Yes. Like a nine cents flip. Yes. There's lots of yeses, potential yeses, which still work with this idea of getting above the lowest, uh, the last point of support after an SOS, after a sign of strength. And that would be a real sign of strength to push up into the golden pocket now. And so that's what I'm kind of looking for to see if that plays out. However, and so this is the caveat. There are caveats, there's always caveats. Let's not be naive. This is crypto, <laughs> anything could happen. Um, I am also looking at a bearish harmonic. So in everything, I'm always contemplating the bullish idea and I'm always contemplating the bearish idea. Okay. Now, for most people, this harmonic is still quite bullish. Okay. But it's actually bearish. You see here on this uh, left chart, this left image rather, um, I'm looking at one of these red ones and the only two that corresponds to the idea that I'm thinking of is either this bearish shark or this bearish ci cipher. Um, bearish shark or a bearish cipher. And the reason why is because here you can see this this pivot was lower than this pivot this pivot was lower than this pivot and that would potentially correspond to this pivot being lower than this pivot it's the only two harmonics where that matches and you're kind of looking at some sort of w and w's are bearish m's are bullish okay so it's just something to bear in mind. Now, I'm following a fib time and I'm going to kind of show you why I'm interested in this harmonic because of this fib time that I've um, that I've drawn out. OK, and I'll just hide them now and I'll show you. And so this this is a fib extension from this bear um, relief rally pivot to the all time low. Okay. So you have a fib extension and these are my fib extension targets of 1.272, 1.414. It's an area that's like a pocket. And then you've got the actual fib. The most bullish fib extension is the 1.618. And then the other thing to bear in mind is if this X actually was the all-time high, yeah, then potentially you'd be looking at something much higher. If this was a cipher or a shark as here, then you could potentially be going up there. Yeah, it would look okay. I'm not in favor of that idea, actually. And David was telling me that he liked it. I, 
I'm not fond of it and I'll tell you why so that would be the X and I'm actually thinking somewhere here okay it doesn't look crazy bullish but you have to just bear in mind something that just because this isn't referred to as a bullish harmonic a bearish harmonic all that it means a bearish harmonic doesn't mean bearish it just means that at the last point the price goes down doesn't mean we're going to zero <laughs> It just means that the harmonic completes and now the price is looking to correct yeah or reverse until it forms something else and usually what happens when you form these harmonics and let's just say for the sake of argument that we get to this t point at about 30 cents in the next two weeks or somewhere that's what i'm imagining right now um i don't think it would work if it was down here that i think that would be strange i think it needs to go higher up now when you look at this that would be this one here it would be a cipher where this is lower the d is lower than the x and then you are forming this kind of this triangle shape here and then you've got these two wings that's your bat i mean sorry that's your cipher it's not a bat if it was a bat this this c would be higher it's not a bat it's a cipher who made these names up i have no idea i didn't make them up <laughs> um so the reason why i'm thinking d stops here and it really has to, for this to play out it has to happen in the next two weeks maybe three weeks two to three weeks okay is because of that trap liquidity i mentioned which was on gate and it's roughly about 20 from about 24 cents through to about 30 cents but also this higher time frame level that i've been tracking um and i've identified that's not it get rid of that now um this yearly level kind of roughly corresponds to the 1.414 of course the price could always extend and then the other thing I'm thinking about is this golden pocket yeah and this is the golden pocket from the all-time high all the way down to all-time low this is the golden pocket so you have a bit of confluence here in terms of the extension of this pivot down to here up the golden pocket which is from the all-time high to the all-time low to there and also this higher time frame level which is the yearly level which is that blue line so there's a little bit of confluence and that also kind of corresponds quite well with the liquidity that's still trapped in this price action here as the price declined it came up and then as the price fell back it trapped liquidity and most of that liquidity most of it is on gates and so thankfully we only have trapped liquidity in a significant net relatively significant amount on gates and not the other exchanges so as far as the other con exchanges are concerned there is no real trap liquidity but it was gate actually so if it was all of them then it'd be a lot more of a stronger resistance and we just have to see how that plays out if it's not that strong then obviously this could overextend and you're still forming a bearish harmonic <laughs> like no, it, nothing changes it's just we just it's just the d here would be much higher up whereas if the trap liquidity starts to play a role in the way the price reacts then potentially the D would be much lower down. I'm thinking that this could happen in the next two weeks. It's still quite away from where we are. You're basically going from, you're basically still looking for another 280% increase in value. That's another 2.8 X. And that's why I still think the prices are low. 
Now, if this was to play out, you're potentially forming another harmonic. It would be, in, in my mind, it would be a bullish harmonic, but it would be from the X to the A. You'd be forming the first arm of a bullish harmonic. And this arm would be it. That would be the first arm of the bullish harmonic. And then we have to see how that plays out. And it all depends. When you look at these harmonics, it depends on the correction. It depends on whether you have a deep correction or whether you have a shallow correction. And obviously you can have like a shark, which is, it makes another pivot higher and then it goes all the way back down. Well, that's a bit unrealistic because that would take us down to the all-time low. So I wouldn't think it'd be a shark. Potentially, then I'd be looking at, actually, of all of these, I'm thinking a, a Gartley. Of all of these, I'm thinking a Gartley. I think a Gartley would make sense, but who knows? Like, we have to see. So let's say we do go up, and I'm going to kind of imagine it now. And this is all speculative. I mean, who knows? <laughs> it's just fun. We're just having fun, right? Let's see, that's your A. You'd be looking at... don't know it doesn't look right either because it looks too long no it's it could be right a long a and a flat a flat correction i don't know it doesn't look right mm. you'd lose that trend line for sure so maybe the trend line would be much shallower in fact and that that can throw people off with trend lines you almost have to take the furthest one then you are potentially making a little bit of a gartley Anyway, the point is that you could end up going from a bearish harmonic to a, a bullish harmonic. Um, I don't like this either, to be honest with you. Yeah. We have to see how this plays out. And it all depends on the D here. But you, we, are, we are making this kind of... And it doesn't really correspond with the Adam and Eve or the or the uh, the the Wyckoff because if you go with the the Wyckoff, maybe the harmonic will be here within a smaller range. It will, this big one, this higher time frame one, is complete, and now you do a W followed by an M, and then it goes up, which is what I was initially thinking. You go from, you go into a W, into an M, and you have a, a lower, a smaller, a more compressed harmonic here before the price finally expands to the upward direction. Yeah, that's kind of what I was imagining when I was, when I just scribbled this, rather than this whole thing just becoming one gigantic range. Um... So then the other thing I had of uh, which was interesting me was the the fib times. Okay, so I think fib time for me is quite interesting, and I'm gonna kind of show you what I mean. Get rid of these higher time levels. Get rid of that. I'll get rid of this now. Get that. And so there's two fib times that I've got in mind at the moment. And they pretty much correspond. So it's quite interesting that they do. You take it from the beginning to this pivot low here where I've got the A. 
to the relief rally which is where i've got this b you see the 618 it gave us a nice pivot low here where the price reversed that was really nice and when you see that you kind of think okay it's a bit spooky but when you see that you think okay maybe the next pivot is going to be our next high which according to this is happening in about two weeks give or take <laughs> okay it would make sense to put in a major pivot on this fib time it would make sense especially if we're coming into some key fib levels If the price were to come on that point on the fib time there'd be very very powerful confluence especially with the formation or the completion of this harmonic and then the other thing that i am imagining is this that was the original fib time that i did which is from the all-time high to this low to this high and then if you correspond it with another fib time how did i do it let me see from this x to this a to this c You see how they line up? So whereas from the all-time high to the A to the B, it's coming at 1. From the A to the C, it's coming at 6.18. So this pivot here is also in time. This pivot here is also in time. So this is a, this is a significant pivot, and it was in time because from the X to the A to the C, it's coming to the same place, <laughs> bizarrely. Uh, and then also, let me just have a look. If you just do it to the B, so from the X to the A to the B, it's not exactly on time, but it's roughly on time. So it comes a week later. And so actually, the pivot, which is the 1.618, comes slightly later, which is there, which would put us at the end of the month. So there's a little bit of confluence with fib time right now. And the confluence is between from this pivot to the A to the B, and then from this pivot to the, the A to the B, or from this pivot to the A to the C here. There's a little bit of confluence when it comes to fib time. And so we are approaching a major fib, fib time. And because the price is going up, I am thinking that we are potentially coming into some kind of major pivot soon. But I'm thinking also that maybe this harmonic will complete. Yeah. it does. It's, the harmonic isn't going to look right if we just stop there. It's going to look really unusual and if that was to form hypothetically let's say we put in a pivot there then you are actually forming a bullish harmonic yeah if i go back to the harmonics let's say we stop lower down at 15 or 16 cents and we just make a higher high uh, then you're potentially you're forming some kind of bullish harmonic but it will be from the A to the B to the C to the D to somewhere else. And looking at these harmonics, the bullish ones, and probably it would be something like hmm, 
No, that's incorrect too. Not correct. That wouldn't work either. Hmm. It wouldn't be correct because the C is lower than the A and none of these harmonics is the midpoint lower. Yeah, it just doesn't look right to me like that. That'd be, I think that'd be weird. It does look like an M, but it, it, it's, it's not an actually an M because the C is lower than the A. It would have to be higher up. So actually I'm thinking, I am actually thinking higher. I just, for some reason I think higher. I don't know. And then I'm also thinking some kind of flat correction, but I don't know, no one can predict that. And if that continues, if we put in another pivot somewhere in July, and then sometime in November, December, we explode. All right, this is something to bear in mind. This is something I, I like to mess about with these charts and see what could happen. I'm just really interested in the fifth time, actually. I'm just interested to see how there is some kind of unusual timing going on and I'm actually thinking, even though this is a bearish harmonic, all it means is that the, from the D it goes down, that's all. And the thing about this is no one knows, like I'm looking at two different bearish harmonic ideas, this one here, this cipher, or this shark, and if it's this... I mean, the shark doesn't look right because the B would be much lower down. This would have to be up there. We basically go into one dollar if it's a shark. So let's see. Let's see what happens in a few in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> anyway, this is interesting. It's definitely going to, you know, like if the price suddenly goes up to one dollar, I'm sure you're going to get some kind of big TP. And then it's going to get quite volatile because, you know, it could go, it could be like that before it goes up. So we don't know how that will play out. I mean, I think if it got up to 30 cents, that would make sense. And then you're looking at maybe forming what I suggested, like a W, followed by an M, followed by an up. And maybe that would land in November or December, and that would be kind of like a consolidation range. Don't know how low it will get. Ideally above that, this pivot here, it'd be a nice long flat consolidation. It'd be very profitable if people are trading that extended range before we get some kind of lift off um according to this the pivot will be who knows and it you know these pivots or you know this could be just i could just be imagining this it could just be it doesn't have to be so prolonged could it be like bam 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 Sometime in July, yeah, it could that could happen too. That would be more in tune with this Wyckoff schematic that I have. Where you have this SOS and you have this consolidation underneath the golden pocket above this pivot and then you have an explosive lift off sometime in July.
April, May. So maybe April and May. Could it go deeper? Yeah, it could go deeper. It could go all the way down to nine cents. I think nine cents is a level that pe that has to be defended if the price does re reject and it pulls back, then I think uh, I would be looking to scale into nine cents and, and defend nine cents. That, that That's my idea. My idea is that we don't go on the nine cents. But actually, th looking at this, I'm thinking probably a little bit higher. I'm thinking probably a little bit higher. And I think it all depends on the limit orders that are placed and how the price is absorbed. And also about the people taking profit, whether people aggressively take profit or they, they don't really take profit because I think it'd be strange to take crazy profits because unless you're looking to buy back lower, just simply because if we do get up to 30 cents, then we really are in an Adam and Eve pattern or this Wyckoff schematic and you know you'd want to continue you know you're looking for continuation you're not looking to exit that's that's kind of my imagination why would you exit when we were only just completing the first part of this higher time frame patterns the two patterns you know it'd, it'd be very it'd be very strange for people to take profit and then exit and be done with this token when we we're only just the beginning really effectively we've only just begun Okay. That's my <laughs> that's my TRBL update. So is this something to bear in mind? It's like it's good to update and keep in mind. We're looking for a major fib time by the end of this month, actually, like between the eighteenth. And the 25th of March and then sometimes it could be one week early or one week late so potentially this is going to be a really strong month and then we have to see okay anyone here <laughs> what else is there to be looked at Let me have a look. 